Dr. Eric Berg has been releasing medical videos on YouTube for years. He recently released a video on how to regrow hair. So what I want to do with you today is look at how medically accurate it is and if he missed anything in terms of recommendations for what you need to do to regrow your hair. Today we're gonna to talk about how to regrow your hair. So whether you are losing hair or your hair is becoming thinner or you have alopecia, this video is for you. Alopecia is a condition characterized by hair loss from some or all areas of the body, usually impacting the scalp. The severity can be a small little patch, which I actually have, to complete baldness. And it's regardless of whether you're a certain age, gender, or ethnicity. There's no discrimination for hair loss. It impacts everyone in different ways. And it can be caused by genetics, hormonal changes, autoimmune disease, and stress is a major factor. I wish I could say there was a magic pill you could just take to regrow your hair, but there's a couple aspects about this that uh, you need to understand. So Dr. Berg is actually wrong here. There are a few medications that are FDA approved to help stimulate hair growth. Minoxidil, which you can get over the counter, helps to improve the blood flow and nutrient delivery to the scalp, as well as increasing what's called the antigen growth phase for the hair follicles. And then of course we have finasteride, which blocks five alpha reductase and you thereby decrease DHT, dihydrotestosterone, which is a major, major contributor to hair loss. And then finally, we have dutasteride, a stronger form of finasteride that's not yet FDA approved, but commonly prescribed by both dermatologists and hair surgeons to address hair loss. Especially as it relates to your foods and your diet. So what is hair? Hair is protein, right? It's a type of collagen. And so do we just eat more protein? That's the question. Well, what is protein? Protein is a bunch of amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. And out of all the amino acids, uh, there's one that's very, very important. It's called lysine. Lysine can have a huge effect over whether you grow hair or not. It seems to be one of the most important amino acids, but it can affect the hair in many different ways. The first being making sure your hair is very, very strong and elastic, okay? Now it's important to point out that keratin is the major protein structure that makes up our hair follicle. And keratin is made up of many different types of amino acids. Lysine happens to be one of the important amino acids that make up the keratin structure. And in terms of getting lysine, it's an essential amino acid. So we need to get it from our diet. We don't make lysine in our bodies. So how do you get lysine? What foods are high in lysine? Well, not plant proteins or grain proteins. Both of those are very poor sources of lysine. One of the best sources is, you guessed it, red meat. It's also in eggs. And this is really relevant now because so many people uh, are telling you not to consume red meat. It's bad for you. It's bad for the environment. Well, I'll tell you right now, grass-fed, grass-finished beef is very healthy for your body as well as for the environment. So we definitely need the quality of protein, right? Something that has high amounts of lysine. So yes, protein is important in our diet. And so if you are a vegetarian, you just have to be a little more conscious about consuming more protein through vegetarian sources. And again, it's important because we need those amino acids to build the keratin structure of our hair follicles. Now, I haven't left this topic of lysine because there's a couple of things that you need to know about it. Um, when you go through stress, the demand, the need for lysine goes way up. So if you're going through a lot of stress and you're losing your hair, that could just mean you need to increase more protein. I can't say for certain that with an increase in stress, we need to uptake more lysine into our diet. But what I can tell you is that stress is a major, major cause of hair loss. It usually causes a condition called telogen effluvian, which is a temporary hair shedding condition. This condition can last up to six months. Now I made an entire video about this, but the big takeaway is it's usually caused by an event where you had stress two to three months before. It could have been caused by the loss of a loved one, a recent divorce, or losing your job. For those people that have gut inflammation, okay, I think they should go on the carnivore for at least a few months because certain properties in that meat will heal the gut. So there is a really interesting connection between your digestive system and your hair. Think of the digestive system as like the roots in the soil. So the plant above the surface is what you can see and you can see if it's healthy or not. Well, in our bodies, the hair is the plant, right? And the roots are in the gut. And this brings up another topic, uh, gut dysbiosis or your friendly bacteria, okay? Your gut microbes actually make amino acids, okay? They make certain proteins. And if there's a disruption of the flora inside, you're gonna have an alteration in the flora on the surface of your scalp not to mention dandruff and other types of skin disorders. As a physician, I look at the human body from a holistic standpoint, and I do believe that the gut microbiome potentially has an impact on our scalp environment, which can thereby impact our hair growth. In our hair clinic, we spend a lot of time looking very closely at the scalp environment as well as the hair follicles. And in some cases, when we're doing trichoscopy and we take these very close images of the scalp, we can see a buildup of the microbial environment. 
So commonly, we will prescribe ketoconazole shampoo to patients to decrease fungal overload, which could have an impact on hair growth. Let's talk about another thing. It's called DHT. This is a very powerful form of testosterone that has been known to um, cause a burnout of the hair follicles or even the thinning of the hair. So there's all sorts of uh, medications out there that inhibit this DHT and help you grow your hair. But of course, they come with side effects. So what are some natural um, DHT inhibitors? Well, a big one is zinc, okay, which happens to be in the red meat again too. So consuming more red meat will actually kill three birds with one stone. But zinc is very, very important in regrowing your hair for other reasons too. But it does inhibit this DHT problem. But you also have lysine. Lysine itself can inhibit DHT. So getting enough protein, again, will help you from many different areas. You can also do pumpkin seed oil. You can do green tea extract. You can do nettle root. These are all natural inhibitors of this DHT. And if we can reduce that, we can then eliminate that barrier if that's one of the causes of your hair loss. Dihydrotestosterone, DHT, is a major contributor to hair loss, as I pointed out earlier. DHT can miniaturize your hair follicles, and it can shorten the antigen growth phase of your hair, pushing it into the resting phase. Now, if you have a genetic propensity for hair loss, something called androgenetic alopecia, which can impact both men and women, your hair follicles might be more sensitive to DHT. So having an increase in DHT can accelerate your hair loss. Luckily, we discussed some medications that do have an impact in blocking the buildup of DHT. One is finasteride, which is FDA approved, and dutasteride, which is a stronger form of finasteride. Both of these medications work really well to block an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase, thereby decreasing this floating DHT. And you can actually then see an improvement in your hair growth and a decrease in your hair loss. Dr. Berg is correct. There are organic solutions out there that potentially act as natural remedies to block DHT. He mentioned pumpkin seed oil is one option. Rosemary oil might be another option. There have been studies that have looked at both of these very closely. We're not 100% sure the mechanism of action, but we believe they potentially act as DHT blockers. So if you're someone who's hesitant about going on oral medication and you want to use an organic solution, either one of these might be a good choice for you if you want to find ways to block DHT buildup. I do believe that diet has an important role to play, like Dr. Berg pointed out, in terms of promoting healthy hair. But medication as well has an important role to play in terms of promoting new hair growth and preventing hair loss. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. If you have any questions, please leave them below. And as always, I'm here on your journey to help you grow hair.